Most guitar players out there don't have a clue about what modes are, and a lot of them who do know about them are really confused by them. I hope you can see how important they really are to your guitar playing, your impro improvisation, and also your songwriting. So let's get started on these. I'm going to use the key of C major for my examples, and of course everybody knows the notes in C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. The first thing we should do is look at a chord scale in the key of C major. And these are going to be all the chords, the basic major and minor chords in this particular key. Okay, so the first chord is going to be C, obviously, it's the root. The second chord is going to be D minor. The third chord is E minor. The fourth chord is F. And then G. A minor. And then B half diminished or you could call that a B minor 7 flat 5. It's the exception chord here. It breaks the rule because there's a flat 5, so it's a little weird. And then, of course, we'd be back to our octave, C major. So there you see we have seven different chords based on the key of C major. And uh, it's really important to know that each chord is related to the key of C major. None of the notes in any of the chords goes outside of the key of C major. Everything is related. It's all the same notes, but just starting from a different point within the scale. So the first thing to learn about modes, which is actually the hardest, is remembering the stupid names. You know, some guy probably 15,000 years ago named these, and he probably did it just to confuse us guitar players in the 20th century. But anyway, it's real important to remember the names of these, so I'm going to give you the names, and through the magic of television, we'll flash them across the screen. Okay, the names of the modes are Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. Told you that was pretty weird. Okay, it's important to remember two things, as I said before, the names of the modes and also the order in which they come in, because the order in which they were just listed and that I just mentioned them in is consistent. That's always the order they come in, and so remember that order kind of like your alphabet. Okay, so we could say that each chord we covered here in the C major scale represents a different mode. Each chord was a different step of the major scale, and so was each mode, and that's what modes are all about. So let's cover the names, and, and sh I'll show you what chords represent what modes. Okay, the first chord, C, which is the root, represents Ionian mode. Now. Remember this rule that Ionian mode is always a major scale. It's always the root of a major key. So if somebody said, let's jam in, in, in C Ionian, you would know that you were in the key of C major. If somebody said they wanted to jam in G Ionian, then you'd know very simply that you were in the key of G major. So it's, it's a very easy rule. You know, Ionian is always the major scale or the major key you're in. Okay. So the next is Dorian, which is represented in this particular key by D minor. We know two things about Dorian. We know Dorian is typically a minor chord, and also that it is the second step of a major scale. Okay, the next mode would be Phrygian, which is represented by E minor. Phrygian is typically a minor chord, and also it is the third step of a major scale. Okay, the fourth step is Lydian, which is F in this case. The fifth step is Mixolydian, which is major, which is G. The sixth step is A minor, which is Aeolian. Now, okay, here's rule number two. Everybody knows that a major key has a relative minor. In this particular key, C major, the relative minor is A minor. And this represents Aeolian mode. So the rule is Aeolian mode always represents the minor scale or the minor key that you're playing in. So remember that because it's going to be easy to relate things to that later. Okay, so our final chord here is going to be the B uh, minor 7 flat 5 or the B half diminished. It's going to represent Locrian. This is the weird one in the bunch. So that completes the seven different modes. So uh, I showed you all the chords in a major scale and we showed you what chords represent what modes by the name. Okay, so the next thing I recommend that you do 
is put all these chords on tape, either with a drum machine or a click track so you can keep time, and practice playing a one octave scale over the different modes. So in other words, start first with a C chord, put that on tape, and play a C scale over top of it in one octave. And that'll give you an idea of what Ionian mode sounds like. So let's move up to the next chord, or the next mode, which is Dorian here. Put a D minor on tape and play a D Dorian mode. And one thing I want to stress before I move on here is right there on the D Dorian mode, I didn't play a D minor scale. I didn't play a D major scale. I played a D Dorian mode, and all that is is basically a C scale, but starting from a D note. So don't get confused and think just because I'm starting with a D here that I'm going outside of the key of C major. I'm not. I'm using all the same notes as I will with all these different modes. And I would kind of relate this to the piano. It's If you played all the white keys on the piano, you'd be playing in the key of C major, obviously. You could start a scale on the C note and play, and you'd be in C major. You could also start a scale on the D note, the E note, the F note, any note. As long as you played all white keys, you'd still be in the key of C major. So don't get confused and think I'm going out of key here. I'm not. All right, so the next mode is, is uh, Phrygian. So put the E minor chord on tape and play the uh, mode over it. Okay, then move up to the uh, F chord, which is Lydian. And that gives you a good idea of what the Lydian mode sounds like. And then the next chord would be G, which would be Mixolydian, and uh, play that particular mode over top of the G. It's a good idea of what uh, Mixolydian sounds like. The next mode is Aeolian, which is A minor, which we said was the root of the minor scale. Put that on tape and play a one octave scale over it. And then our final mode is going to be Locrian. It's going to be the B minor 7 flat 5 chord. So that gives you a good idea of what Locrian mode sounds like. Okay, so we went through all the different chords, modes here, and we played a one octave scale over them. And the whole point, really, in this was to show you, basically, that we're not going outside of the key of C major. We're just starting at different points in the C major scale. Many people get confused by that and think you're, like, changing the, the, the notes in the scale, and they get really confused, but, you know, don't let that happen. You're basically only in one key here, but starting at different points. Okay, so... Now what we're going to do is we're really going to define the sound of the modes. What we're going to do is take one b uh, bass note, and it's going to be a B here, and I want you to put this on tape and play all the different modes over this B note. So in other words, we're going to play B Ionian, B Dorian, B Phrygian, B Lydian, B Mixolydian, B Aeolian, and B Locrian. So we're going to have a bunch of different modes all over the B note, and this is going to help you really hear the different and the tonalities of all the different modes. So, the first thing we're going to do is want to build a B Ionian. Now, as we said before, B Ionian, the Ionian mode is always a major scale. So, very simply, we're going to be in the key of B major. So, put a B uh, note or a B major chord on tape and then play the B scale over it and then improvise with it a little bit just to get the feel for what it sounds like. All right, so there's a good example of what the Ionian mode sounds like. It reminds me of a real happy type of feel. Okay, so our next mode is going to be the Dorian mode. So let's build a Dori B Dorian. We know two things. We know that Dorian is minor, so it's going to be a B minor chord. And we also know that, B, that Dorian is the second step of a major scale. 
So the way I look at this is rather than, you know, remember all the notes in a Dori Dorian scale, you know, the typical way it's taught is like the Dorian is a major scale with a sharp this or a flat that, you know, who really cares? All you need to do is relate it to the basic key you're in. And since we know that Dorian is the second step of a major scale, then obviously the first step is A. So very simply, you know you're in the key of A major, but you're playing over the second chord, B minor, and you're starting with a B note. So put the B minor chord on tape and uh, play the, the B Dorian scale, which is going to be the A major, starting with a B note. All right, so there's a good example of what a Dorian mode sounds like. I call it the Western mode because for some reason it reminds me of a cowboy movie or a Western movie. I can almost visualize John Wayne riding a horse through the desert. It might not remind you of anything like that, but I think it's real important to get a visualization of each mode or each sound. Because if you can kind of be reminded of a different feeling or a different, even a song or you know, a Western movie, whatever. If, if a mode can remind you of something, then it's going to be easier for you to remember the sound of that mode, and I think it can be real helpful in the long run. So try to visualize the sound. You know, put it into some thoughts in your head so you can easily remember it. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is build a B Phrygian, because Phrygian is next in line. We know that Phrygian is typically a minor chord, and it's the third step of a major scale. So if B is the third step, then obviously... Our first step must be G. So we know we're playing in the key of G major, and its relative minor would be E minor. So we'd be playing in G major, E minor, but starting with a B note over a B chord. It's as simple as that. So put the B minor chord on tape, play the scale over it, and then improvise to get a feel for it. So there's what Phrygian sounds like. It's kind of a mysterious, eerie type of feel. And there is an exception on this mode. We said that it was typically a minor chord, but one thing I want to point out, and this is done a lot in classical music, is you can substitute a major chord here. So we'd make B minor, B major, which would mean we would change the D note to D sharp. Make B major. So now go through, put the chord on tape again, play the scale, but what you have to do is, since we made D, D sharp, we have to change all the notes in the scale from D to D sharp. Okay, so here's what that sounds like. All right, so there's the other way we can use a Phrygian mode. Again, that reminds me of something really mysterious and like an eerie type of feel, almost a little bit Egyptian. Okay, so our next mode in line is Lydian. So we're going to build a B Lydian. B Lydian. Lydian is a major chord, so it's going to be B major. And Lydian is the fourth step from a major scale. So very easily we can find out that the first step is F major. So we know we're in the key of F major, and the relative minor would be E flat minor. So let's play that scale over the B chord, which is going to be Lydian mode.
right, so there's a good idea of what Lydian sounds like. Um, I call it the movie mode because it's, for some reason it's used a lot in movie soundtracks. I notice it a lot, especially when somebody's flying through the air like Superman. They use the Lydian mode to express that. I don't know why, but I'm just kind of used to hearing it in movies now, so that's kind of how I remember it, actually. Uh, so, you know, again, put that on tape and play the Lydian mode over it. One thing that really defines the Lydian mode is that there's a tritone. Over the B chord, we have an F note in there, which is really kind of weird, but if you play the B and play the F in a higher octave, you get like a really cool kind of effect. That's one thing that really defines the tonality of a Lydian mode. It kind of sounds a little weird just playing it over one note like this, but I think if you experiment with it and play it in some of your chord progressions, you'll find it's a, a real interesting mode. It's one of my very favorite ones. Okay, so our next thing we're gonna do is build a mixolydian mode, a B mixolydian, because mixolydian is the next in line. So we know that mixolydian is a major chord, so it's gonna be B major. And we also know that the Lydian, I mean, the mixolydian mode is the fifth step of a major scale, or we know that Aeolian follows mixolydian. So if somebody said, hey, Vin, let's jam and be mixolydian, how I, know, how I would know where I was at is I would relate it to the Aeolian mode, which is right after it. So I would quite simply look at the neck, play the B chord, move it up a whole step to the Aeolian mode, which is a C sharp minor chord. So I would know that I was basically in the key of C sharp minor or uh, E major would be the relative major, and I'd just be starting from the B note. So put, again, put that on tape, and play the C sharp minor scale starting with B, and you'll get the mixolydian tonality. So there you have your mixolydian sound. It reminds me of like a happy summertime type of feel. And please ignore those couple wrong notes I played in there. I think you got a good idea of what it sounds like from the uh, majority of them, which were right, I hope. But anyway, that reminds me of a summertime feel. And there's a couple examples I played for you in there. Norwegian Wood and uh, also Freeway Jam by Jeff Beck. So again, I told you to try to visualize something to re mind you of the mode you can even you know remember songs and you know the Norwegian wood is a really strong type of tonality you can remember that very easily so if you have trouble remembering mixolydian you can think of that and it'll give you a feel for what it's all about okay so our next mode is aeolian we're going to build B aeolian um, as we said before aeolian is always the root of a minor scale so if we're playing B aeolian we're very simply in the key of B minor and the relative major is D so let's put that on tape and play the scale over it and then improvise with it a little bit. So there's B Aeolian, that's one of the most common modes, uh, Aeolian and Ionian, because they're just basic major and minor scales. Uh, everybody's pretty familiar with that tonality already, I assume, and to me that reminds me of like a more sad type of feel. Okay, so our last and final mode is going to be the weird one, Locrian, 
And so the chord is going to be a B half diminished. And put that on tape and play the scale over top of it and then improvise with it a little bit. Locrian sounds like. I told you it was pretty weird. And by the way, how we find out what we're key we're in right there is I would relate it to the Aeolian mode, which is right before it, so I would know if we were playing B Locrian that we were in the key of A minor, or also the major scale is right next to it too, the Ionian. So we could say it's either the seventh step from a major scale or it's the second step from a minor, but it'd be easier just to compare it to the minor scale and know which is right next to it and play in A minor. And, uh, just start from the B note over the B chord. Uh, to me, that's the most difficult lick to play over. It's a little too weird for me. I, I'm not real comfortable with it, but the best way to do it, or you know, what I normally do, is just to play a bunch of diminished triads over top of it. <laughs> that type of thing, and that usually works. 